G'day and welcome to Aussie Vision. I'm Kyriakos and we have Ted with us here today. Hey mate, how are you? Yeah, good. How are you? Yeah, I'm and, doing well. I'm doing well. <laughs> and uh, we are talking about Greece and their entry for Eurovision 2022, Die Together, by Amanda Yuryadi Tenfield. Ted, would you like to tell us a little bit about Amanda? Sure. So Amanda Georgiadi Tenfield, as we say in Bogan, um, is a Greek-Norwegian singer-songwriter. She was born in Greece and moved to the town of Tenfield in Norway when she was about three. So she's been there most of her life. And so that makes her quite similar to like Stefania from last year and Katarin Duska before that, where the Greek broadcaster is interested in looking at people who were like in the Greek diaspora rather than necessarily being based in Greece. She's released a few EPs and singles over the last couple of years. And alongside that, she also studies medicine, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so she is a very multi-talented gal. Yeah, she really is. Now, we're going to be looking um, today at the jury and televote appeal of the song. Now, we got members of the Ozovision team to give a score out of 10 on what they think the jury and televote appeal is. And we tallied up the votes. Now... The average score out of 10 for the jury appeal for Greece from the Aussie Vision team is 8.57. Eight <laughs> 8. All right. Now, that's really good. The team think the jury will be giving Greece a pretty good result here. Um, mm -hmm. Ted, what are your thoughts on the scoring from the team? So I think that's the correct number, basically. But also, I do think we're both a bit biased because I know we both really like this song. Um, I think there's always a risk of assuming that like, oh, it's a ballad and therefore the jury is really going to like it and the televote will hate it. But I think there's enough features here that a jury genuinely will very much go for this. Like you have that sort of ambitious opening minute where she's just singing on her own. And we've seen a couple of live performances now, not at the pre-parties, but just sort of on TV. And she can clearly do it. Like it's not going to be a problem in terms of executing this. And so if she can do that, conjure the right mood and like just execute on what's already there in the song. I think there's enough sort of, you know, potential there and enough interesting features that your average jury member is going to sit up and take notice. So I really don't have any worries about the jury for Amanda at all. She's going to be fine. Yeah, same. I agree. I definitely think this is a jury kind of song. Yeah, you know, people say mm -hmm. they go for ballads all the time, but I think Amanda has quite nice haunting vocals in the beginning. And the production mm -hmm. to me is very contemporary, very crisp, and it ticks off a lot of um, extra boxes that the jury would usually uh, go for. Now, in 2018, yeah. Greece got 16th place with the jury, but um, ever since they've actually kind of redeemed themselves. So 2019 yeah. with Better Love, they came second with the jury in the semi final. Um, once, I think it was like one spot above Australia. And uh, then last year, mm. Um, Stephanie got fifth, um, was it fifth place <laughs> with the jury? With she uh, did well. Last I was always a bit confused about that. Okay? <laughs> yeah. But I think what they've changed and what you've seen since 2019 is what I was just talking about. So, you know, if you look at On Your Own Move from 2018, sorry if I butchered the pronunciation there, but that was a song that sounded very like Greek, for want yeah. of a better word. And like, so, and that also applied to like Utopian Land, that weird one from 2016. And both of those got slaughtered. Yeah. So, what they've really done, and like some people don't like this, I think it's fine, is they've very much gone for a sound that's going to appeal to people in like London yeah. all the way across to like people who are in like, you know, Kiev or who are in, you know, Tallinn or people who are in Melbourne. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I don't think. You're going to get jurors all across the continent who are going to go for this. And so it's not pigeonholing itself into one area, I think, what which is really helpful. Well, now it is time for the televote appeal. And uh, oh, the God. average score <laughs> out of 10 for the televote appeal for Greece from the Aussie Vision team is 7.5. Oh, that's actually better than I thought. Yeah, that, that's actually not too bad. Um, <laughs> so, Ted, what do you think of that? Look, hey, again, I want to emphasize... We have people assume that the televote hates ballads. That is just not true. Like Salvador Sobral slammed the televote. Barbara Pravi slammed the televote. You know, even like John's Tears didn't do terribly with the televote. People like ballads. Um, and especially if they are either that sort of like culturally specific, slightly retro vibe, or people like those sort of modern things that sound like they could be on the radio. The Duncan Lawrence, you know? So, and... For me, when I first heard this, there's always been one song, 
like last couple of years where I've had that sort of Duncan Lawrence moment where you've gone, oh, this is quite good. Um, and you could argue that it's because like they're a bit formulaic and they start off with the, you know, it's the John's Tears, the Duncan Lawrence, and now the Amanda. They start off with the very minimalistic chorus and then they slowly build and then around the second chorus, everything drops and it all explodes. Yep. And yep. you go, wow, isn't this cinematic? But there's a reason why they do it. It's because it works. It's because we're all a bit basic. And um, I think the televoters at home will, assuming it doesn't look trash on stage, will go for it because it does take you somewhere. There's a story here. There's a narrative and there's a mood. Um, and that's what people like. They want to move. They want to feel something. So yeah. I don't think this is dead in water at all. Yeah, exactly. Um, I also, I've got here that production to me is very current. Uh, I've got even mm -hmm. like Billie Eilish, you know, and I've got Lana Del Rey vibes as well personally from this song. Um, but the lyrics... People keep saying Lord, but then oh, I don't yeah. actually think it's very Lord. It's mostly the fact <laughs> right. that she looks a little bit like Lord. Yeah, like I'm not here... Like, like it's the long sort of dark curly hair, but like this doesn't sound like Lord to me, I'll be honest. But we have to talk about the lyrics here. Like when I first heard the song, I was um, absolutely captivated. But at the same time, mm. the lyrics can come across a little bit bleak. And um, I know that- um, I disagree. Can, can I disagree on this? No, no, let me keep, everyone me, keeps... let me, let me keep <laughs> you my points first. So when, <laughs> when Amanda did her song review on Ed, she was interviewed uh, by one of the presenters. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that segment, um, they actually said, oh, it's a song- about the war is it a, like in ukraine is it about mm. covid and she was like no 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 it's about a breakup of a long-term mm -hmm. relationship uh, that's what it's about and when when i looked at it like that i really mm -hmm. connected with it a lot better mm -hmm. yeah, what do you think ted okay so i've seen a lot of people be like oh no they talk about death in the title how could this possibly go down with anyone like i think that's a little bit of a limited perspective like not disagree uh, yes disagreeing with people <laughs> like for one thing, I think, yes, it's called Die Together, but I think the point to make is she's not talking about how she, like, wants to die or, like, how she, like, thinks dying is great or anything. Yeah, she's not, like, pro-death in this, but she, it's very much that sort of Romeo and Juliet thing of, like, you know, she's imagining that idea. I don't know. Have you read Romeo and Juliet? You know the ending where, like, they yeah. both sort of one dies and then the other dies and it's this terribly romantic thing where they die together and therefore they're spoiler, perpetually spoiler. in love <laughs> yeah sorry spoiler for 500 year old play um, but uh they die together wow you know thematic um and there's this sort of wonderful moment where they're like perpetually going to be in love nothing's ever going to change and it's sort of it's like taking a photo and it captures that moment forever so it's like i don't think it's depressing i think it's quietly very romantic and quite uplifting in a sense well and i actually think that this will make the top 10 televote in the semi-final mm -hmm. because i also went back and looked and uh greece has actually made uh the televote top 10 even even 2018 um 2018 mm -hmm. they came 10th for the televote can we talk about staging though because like okay, so we get as like fans we get really it's almost a cliche to be like oh this is a good song but it's all going to come down to the staging but like I think the Greek broadcaster has occasionally taken that a little bit far um, because they hear, oh, yes, we need to focus on the staging. And therefore, they interpret that as we need to throw literally everything in the kitchen sink yeah. at the staging. Yeah. And so you got like Stephanie's like weird CGI stuff. The moment you start hearing about amazing special effects and rehearsals, brace yourself because yeah. that stuff's going to look trash. <laughs> and like, Katarine Dushka already mentioned her beach balls. Like, it was just too much. And I think if you you risk taking away from the simplicity and what actually works here by overranking the pudding, effectively. Yeah, I, I think 2018, personally, I think they didn't, didn't do enough for the staging. Mm -hmm. But then 2019, 2021, they did too much. But they then Greece, <laughs> 10th in the grand final, so they might see that as oh, we did really well. So it, it does come down to focus on the team with what they do, but yeah. I am very nervous uh, with how they will go. So I just want to say, <laughs> Ted, do you think Greece will qualify? And where do you think it will, it will land in the grand final if you think Greece will qualify? Greece is qualifying. I don't think there's any, like, question about that. Like, I have them in my solid, like, top three or four. I think the only question mark about whether they qualify is, like, the battle of the sad girls where you've got Greece and the Netherlands and Portugal and Armenia and Croatia and even like Lithuania who's not quite as sad but is still a woman um 
And like, I don't know, like it's possible that she loses out on that, but I don't think she will. She's clearly in the, in the upper end of those sort of sad girls. Then you take her through to the final. I think the risk is always that you have Cordelia Jacobs and she just sucks up. She sucks up the sad girl contingent, you know. Um, I think Greece can come in the top 10. I think they can do better than what Stephanie did last year. I don't know if they will. Me too. Easily will qualify from, semi, from yeah. the semi final. Um, and I can see the song getting like a fifth or tenth. Uh, yeah, mm. I, I can see what you're saying with the, the Cornelia factor um, there as mm. well. I would love for Greece to get like a top five finish as well. But even the top 10, second year in a row, I think they would see that as a really good result. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we have it. Thank you, Ted, for the for the chat with us about Greece this year. No problem. And we'll have to wait and see how Amanda goes in semi-final one on May 10th. That's the morning of May 11th with us Aussies. Uh, thank you very much again and uh, catch you later. Catch you later, mate. See ya.